Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending my talk. I really appreciate your time and attention. Hopefully it will be valuable for you. Uh, thank you for a great introduction. I don't have to now waste time for this. Uh, I believe I was invited here because for the last four years, um, uh, I am consulting companies and individuals around my favorite topic, which is psychology, neuroscience and sports psychology and how can we apply it to performance and satisfaction. And for me, those two elements have to uh, go together hand in hand like yin and yang for uh, long term effects and also satisfaction from life. So when it comes to one on ones with people and individual clients, uh, more than half of people who reach out to me um, come to, with this exact topic of today's conversation. So I believe most of us really would love to have the career path and being the career place that you feel is uh, deeply aligned with who you are, what you prefer, what you like and what you dream of. So that's a challenge sometimes, as we all know, but this is what I'm working on. And I'm really happy to share some of the lessons. There are so many that the biggest challenge was narrowing it down to just a few. But if you will be interested in more, uh, reach out to me and um, we can actually organize some more content uh, for you. Um, as I was introduced, I also uh, worked before in IT. So this is the dearest industry for me. Uh, and I also still work mostly with people with IT. And I believe all of my experiences before prepared me for what I'm doing right now, uh, including Google Developers Experts, which are um, incredible individuals who really care about their career path, as well as a wonderful, wonderful base, which uh, you will hear more today from Bart uh, Kishala. So I can't wait for this talk too. So let's go back to the topic of today. So I choose three topics that I want to talk about. Um, the three key requirements that from my experience and observations, if you have, if you meet those requirements in your life, you significantly increase um, possibility of being in a really fascinating place career-wise. And obviously this is not everything, this is not all, there is so much more, but I had to choose something. That's why I've chosen the biggest one and it sounds obvious, but obviously we have to know ourselves. Uh, we cannot even have an idea of who we want to be if we don't know who we are right now. Uh, honoring our values. Uh, this is a big topic that surprised me myself on my path and path with my clients. I think this is one of the easiest things that we can do in life that can skyrocket our satisfaction in life. Pretty easy, underrated. And something that from my perspective is the biggest blind spot. So what condition, in what condition is our nervous system? Because if it's not in a good condition, in my personal opinion, observation and scientifically based, uh, you have, like, you really uh, don't have a chance for a really intentional, good, big decision about your career life. And we talk about why. Okay, so let's talk about knowing self. So when I work with people from IT, most of people I work with are thinkers, wonderful thinkers with a huge self-reflection. I don't even, uh, I don't consider myself a coach because the definition of coaching is that I help someone tap into their own wisdom. Uh, I consider myself consultant because my clients don't need that. They are really self-reflective people who know themselves a lot. And it was a question at the beginning of my work, why is that that so many people are actually in confusion about their career if they know themselves so much. And I really like this uh, quote of Scott Balski, the people whose careers I admire most have learned to capitalize on their difference. And I think this quote um, holds a little secret to how to actually know yourself in a way that is practical to you and you can use it to capitalize it. And this, this, the secret is the difference. So um, I've observed it's not enough that we know ourselves in our own individual universe. We have to find something that will help us know ourselves in comparison to other people. That's why the psychological tools may help us to measure us, ourselves against others and see what is actually unique about me? What is different? Maybe those uh, things that I thought everybody thinks this way, maybe they are unique, maybe they are different. 
And if I would have to choose one tool that I, from many, many tools that I've tried, that is absolutely the best at this, it will be Clifton Strengths. It is a paid tool, so I need to clarify that I am not affiliated. I don't work for company Gallup. I don't have any incentive if I convince you to do the test. Um, I'm not even a certified coach, but I'm a big fan of this. I studied it from A to Z for the last six years. And uh, studying this tool was actually the second psychology studies for me on the individual uh, differences. And I've seen what it can do for people. So why I recommend it so much is because it can give you insight about your natural strengths, but also weaknesses and even blind spots, drivers, values, needs, tactics of effectiveness, and even your own individual GPS features. So what do I mean by that? If you show me your report from Clifton Strengths, I will be able to tell you what are the features of your GPS, because some people really need goals and visions like me. And I used to think that everybody is driven by this. It turns out it's absolutely not true. Other people, and this will be reflected in your profile, will be driven by values or need to have a mission or purpose. Other people will not be driven by this at all. They will have this identity-driven motivation. So they will have to feel like, I know who I am and I know who I want to be. And the biggest driver for me is becoming a person I want to be. And there are some more nuances to that so you can figure it out. So my proposition is if you have Clifton Strengths done or you will have, you can email me and we will do like one hour and a half office hours additional to this session when you can send me your reports and we will do a fun workshop. Uh, what is it about your profile? Um, that you can use to design your GPS. So um, who is hearing, hearing first time about this tool? Okay, a lot. Okay, so I'll just say quickly two things about uh, what it is, and then I'll give you some examples how powerful it can be, okay? So what they did brilliantly, in my opinion, is how precisely they defined 34 traits. You can see them here. Um, that are just traits that human population has in a various distribution. And when you do the assessment, the algorithm will order for you which tendencies, because these are tendencies, are the strongest and more, uh, most active for you. So for this person, she has, this person has a very strong futuristic tendency, which means that when this person has a problem, the first thing that comes to her mind is envisioning a future that how this could look like in the future. And the imagination is really strong. If somebody has futuristic at 34, this will be the last tactic, the last what will happen in their mind when they have a problem. So um, you get um, so you can think about this like almost like operating system in your mind in your brain. Uh, we all have 34 apps in our brain, but the bandwidth is for maybe between 10 and 15. And the top 10 is like a safe bed. This is what drives you. And to get to know those drivers, strong tendencies can tell you so much about um, what you can do to have a better career. So I'll give you an example. I used to be a recruiter in IT also. Uh, so one of the most popular things that I've read in CV is people uh, writing that I'm a problem solver. And if you have an intuition, you're a great problem solver, solver that's a great big thing to be proud of. But this is knowing yourself, but kind of knowing yourself, right? Because what practical can you do with that knowledge to your career planning? Like not really too much. But Gallup will actually tell you what are your tactics, individual unique tactics behind problem solving? Are you a strategic thinker, analytical thinker, or maybe very creative thinker? So 21% of population have a very strong strategic thinking tendency, which is like a chess player kind of thinking. So these people, you can, some of you will recognize yourself. It's like thinking very fast forward, like step one, step two, step three. They can uh, compare alternative uh, paths and quickly decide which path will be the best. Analytical thinkers are more like mathematicians, right? So they will decompose complexity into simple problems, challenge, 
and um, they will solve problem this way. And there are also creative thinkers who think very creatively like a graph in their head and they connect the dots really quickly so they have these innovative ideas. And you, these are only three from 34, okay? And you might be a mix of all three of them or none of them. So, but with this knowledge, you can do so much more. Because now you know, okay, I will, I, I want to be paid for innovative ideas, or I want to be paid analytical for challenging, for uh, solving like really difficult problems. Otherwise, I'll be bored and will com complicate this, the, the simplest task in my job. There's also the dark side of each of these strengths. And I will just give one example here. 28% of population have this very strong tendency of responsibility. So those people are very, um, very accountable and dependable. These people will tell, if I say, will say that I will do something, for sure I will do something. Anybody recognizes themselves with this? Right, I can see so, right? And those people, like when they really commit to something, they might be not sleeping all, all, all night, but they don't want to let people down. And they get very frustrated when others let them down, right? So let me give you an example. If you know this dark side, the dark side is actually the fear of letting others down. So, for example, I've worked with many people with this strength who knew exactly what their next career step is, but they were stuck in their place for months and years because every time they're in the middle of project and they don't want to let people down, they committed they will do it. Before this ends, the next project starts. And just not being aware that this is my very specific and pretty unique fear gets these people stuck. But when we know it, we can actually find workarounds around it. Apart from that, there are two powerful tools also to get to know your strengths and weaknesses that I've learned from some of the most impactful leaders at uh, Google, actually. So I stole these tools and practices, and I have to tell you, they're really powerful. One is having a habit of getting regular feedback. So those people send a survey to people they work with and ask two questions. What do you think my strongest aspects and talents are? What do I re did really well in the recent time? And the second, what traits of mine block me the most from your perspective? And when you gather this regularly, you see patterns, you get great insights in how people see you. And the second is learning from successes. So this is something that is not natural for us because our brain has this negative bias. We actually, actually, it is proven that we learn so much more from negative experiences and we tend to dismiss the positive. So in order to balance that, some people every week, they write down what was the most successful uh, things that happened this week and what exactly did I do um, that worked well because I want to do more of that. And when I do this exercise, sometimes I go back to this long list of things that I've done well and I cannot believe what I read. It's like, I would never remember this if I didn't write this down. One of the most important things when we are on our way to knowing ourselves is the question, what is most important to you? So some people will call it drivers, values. Some people like to think about future self or even on, on the more spiritual side, soul essence, right? If you had a soul, how would I recognize that this is you? What is about you? What is for you that is the most important? And sorry, and this is something that we cannot decide about ourselves. I cannot just decide from today, being um, altruist will be important for me. No, no, no. We're looking for something that life, our unique experience, life experience made us to be really authentically important to us. And every person has some of such things. Why it's so important? Because importance is directly connected to our dopamine system. So it's key to our motivation. So let's remind ourselves what is the dopamine system. Uh, when uh, mouses are being engineered to not being able to produce dopamine, the food will lie next to them and they will not eat it. They will starve to death. 
and not eat it. If you put the food to their mouth, they will eat it and enjoy it and will be visibly happy because the serotonin system works well, but they will not reach out for it. And this is a picture of what dopamine system is. It, it is the system for being the go-getter, reaching for something, being motivated. This is the opposite of procrastination. And that's why uh, importance, knowing what's your importance, is actually the key to your own dopamine system when you need it. And I've worked with so many people, and I'm guilty of this myself, that sometimes the moments in our life when we procrastinate the most are the moments when we neglect the things that are so important for us. So we basically squash our own dopamine system. We say no. And we turn around and try to force ourselves for things that are not that important to us. And we wonder why we cannot. And we study those books on productivity and procrastination. So this is like a shortcut, what we're talking about here. Um, values, okay? Working with values and what's important to us and becoming a person who stops neglecting our own values and stop on, start honoring them. So what do it, does it exactly mean? I will give you some examples. So did you ever, has any person here ever wrote down and named their values? Can you raise your hand? Yes, we have some. Congratulations. Yes. And those who didn't, you're still in the majority, but you have a pretty good opportunity to try. So um, it's one to name them and then engage with them on a daily basis. So there are very um, simple exercises. I can send you some if you want. Uh, you can find it in the internet. The best start is to get this huge list of uh, values and highlight everything that resonates with you strongly and then group this and find some top 10 uh, candidates and then try to narrow it down to your top values. This is another great question to ask yourself. Uh, what are the top important aspects of your life that when they are taken care of, everything else goes better? So this is a real life example from one person who decided that when she has the peace of mind, everything else goes better. And when she doesn't have it, everything like this is her biggest leverage. That's why this will be her number one value. Those values will be also your weakest points, points when you, have, haven't, uh, you don't have them. So for her, she actually realized through this exercise that when she neglects her creativity need, which is very strong for her, she becomes the worst mother and the worst wife. And when she gives herself her daily time, she actually connects to this, what is really important to them, to her. She becomes the best mom and the best wife. So honoring or neglecting in the end is the question of what exactly do you do daily to connect with what's most important to you? And it doesn't have to be much. If you try it, you can spend three, five minutes daily. But if you do it, so much changes. You get so much more clarity and ease around career choices. Clarity because you can remember your values and you will not choose anything that will hinder your values but also ease. People who work with this often say that thanks to committing to my own values, those big decisions are not so frightening because, okay, I will pick wrong company. Never mind, I will change it because I always have this my own space. When I have my safe space, my respect space when I connect with self. And at work, when we sometimes are at work, when our values are not met, we get frustrated and we tend to blame the workplace. So this person, if she's in a very non-creative place, she will start fighting with us. But if she takes care of her own value, she might become the number one person in this company who starts contributing. Because with values, it's like with my favorite quote with passion. Passion is not what you find, it's what you bring to the table. And all of those most important values are exactly the same. Uh, we can, by doing those exercises, we can start blaming and looking for it and we can actually start contributing what's important. And coming to the last one. So we, we talk about finding and building a highly satisfying career path. So this came to me during pandemic and then during uh, the war with Ukraine when it started. Uh, the things that I'm doing with clients always worked and suddenly it doesn't work. 
And obviously people don't tell me as a good morning that they have a burnout, but then it turns out in the conversation that they have a really serious, prolonged stress going on on burnout or even they healing from depression right now. So all of those things we talk about might not work for you if you're in this state, because in the end, the two keys to have be, to be connected with your GPS is one being connected to this essence. We talk about strengths, values. But the second is the biological ability to feel satisfaction. Without it, you can have the best option in front of yourself and you will not resonate with it because you just don't feel it. You're too far away from it emotionally. So if you ever find yourself in this time, be sure that this will block your ability to recognize which path is yours. And this is because of two mechanisms. First is the serotonin system. If you have prolonged stress, the serotonin system is being dysregulated. You might uh, not just not being able to feel this as well. Here is the slide for you. You can analyze for yourself. These are the red flags that there's something wrong and there needs to be intervention. And I also have a slide with intervention, but we're not going to stop here. We move forward. So um, also uh, on my slides, you will find a really cool, I, I, I skipped one slide, but you will find it earlier, a uh, brain test, uh, which is free online that you can check uh, for your brain type, because some of our brains are genetically predisposed to have a lower serotonin level. So then you are at higher um, risk of developing uh, this problem. And the second really important uh, mechanism is just being just the negative stress. So, you know, it's a mobilization or um, a reaction. And what happened in our brain, we actually get very narrow focused. The blood flow goes to the emotional part of the brain when we are in negative permanent stress so that we can be highly reactive because we... We are in threat for our brain, but this is at the cost of our frontal lobes, which are responsible for all the skills and abilities that you need to have this thoughtful, future-oriented thinking about your career. So when you are in a prolonged stress, it really is good not to expect from yourself high performance on, on this, right? So let's skip that one. Maybe we'll come back if it's questions. To sum up, last year, Gallup did huge uh, research and 76 of employees experienced burnout from time to time. Literally yesterday on LinkedIn, Adam Pona from Mindgram reported that they've researched 2,000 people in Poland and 43% of people in IT feels burnout right now. And very often in those biggest crises, we want to change the job because we think it's that, or we want to make a big move. So it's really important for me to leave this message. If you're not a good place, give yourself a break and seek relief first. Heal your nervous system because it's only when you are in your peace of mind, you can have access to your best forward thinking decisions. And then if you have that, invest in naming and capitalizing on your strengths. And then commit to your value daily and see what magic can happen in your life. Thank you so much for your attention. If there are any questions, I think we have a few minutes. Thank you. Absolutely.